Aww. Oh, I have so many cats outside. <clears throat> Hi everyone, this is Jeannie and welcome to my channel. I thought I would come on and let you know Just let you know why I don't drink alcohol. Um, it's kind of a boring story, but when I was real young, <clears throat> I had all these respiratory problems, pneumonia, and allergies. Oh, what's going on out there? Um, and I. I was constantly in the hospital, in and out of the hospital. I don't know why, they couldn't fix whatever it was, but um, <clears throat> I always felt kind of bad because I got all this attention and I didn't want it. And I was constantly drugged up to avoid getting, I guess, bronchial infections and pneumonia and allergies, I don't know what. And so, my parents or my mother and the doctors had me on all this medication until I was in junior high school. I remember distinctly in junior high school. Um, and I don't know, I just, I always, I was always on medicine constantly. And when I stopped taking it, I would get sick again and end up in either in the hospital or staying home from school for weeks, a couple of weeks at a time. And I was never as smart in school as my brothers and sisters. I remember that. And I remember, especially in the fifth grade, I remember this so distinctly. I was, I love to read. I've always loved to read. Oh, I remember in first grade learning. I remember my first book, and learning how to connect the letters. And I was immediately fascinated. But I remember distinctly in the fifth grade, I was in the slowest group. They had like the kids who could do really, really well, smartest ones, and then the normal ones, and then the really slow ones. I was in the slow group. And I remember one day coming to class in the fifth grade and you had to read out loud during reading reading class and I guess I wasn't on my medicine or something but I took my book and I just started reading like an adult you know just it was easy it was really easy for me and I read and after a few minutes the teacher said um, I can't believe you read that. And he was, I remember he was stunned, really stunned. He stopped our portion of the class and talked to me. And that was the first time I had a clue that something was going on with me related to the medicine. And then of course I just went on. I had to stay on my medicine. And <clears throat> so, I'm going to get photobombed again by Dennis. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> it's so funny. So then I remember a couple of years later, I was on even more intense medicine because I, I really had some close, couple of maybe I would say three close calls where they really didn't think I would make it. And, oh, I remember, oh, I hated the hospitals. And here I worked in one for a long time. So I remember teachers get reviewed and observed. It's just, they still do. My son gets reviewed and observed. And one of my favorite teachers was being observed. I had no idea. I, was, I lived in like a fog constantly a fog. I'll never forget it. And he was being reviewed. I didn't know it until I grew up. 
And the guy reviewing him was asking different kids different questions to test them. And he asked me, he came to me and asked me a question. I had no idea. I, had, I was in a fog. Oh, I'm getting a hot flash thinking about all this. I should tell him I'm taking a video video because I don't know how to cut. <laughs> well, my teacher was behind me, Mr. Dargardi. I loved him and he was holding up his fingers telling me the answer. <laughs> He's dancing. <laughs> he was holding up his fingers so I I didn't even relate it, but I said the answer and I got it right, <clears throat> and he moved on to another kid. Well, then I got older, and uh, I, I remember in the eighth grade, I was really bad and uh, was on medicine, and same thing happened. I remember my mother sleeping with me, and I was pretty old in you know, the next bed keep an eye on me. She was a nurse and we were really close and she was worried and my father was too and anyhow I got through that crisis and when I got married I decided I would never be on medicine again. Um, I was hooked on primatine. Now you can't even buy it. It's I don't even think they sell it anymore. But I remember I couldn't breathe unless I had a half of primatine. And I would always try to wean myself off and I couldn't. Well, when we moved to California, I got married, moved to California, learned about a really healthy lifestyle uh, with vitamins and healthy fresh fruits. They had like five growing seasons of the fruits and vegetables there. And uh, I got off all of my medicine and became really, really healthy. And I noticed I didn't have any brain fog. Um, now, I know that sometimes you have to have medicine to survive in a lot of cases. I was lucky and, uh, oh, that's my spinner and <laughs> utility room. Oh, a utility room is where my washer and dryer is. I had some questions on my last video. It's where I keep my ironing board and a place to fold my laundry and brooms and dust mops and all the stuff to clean my house. That's what a utility room is. So anyhow, I got really healthy and I didn't need any more medicine. And I knew, and you know, my husband has wine and a beer every now and then. Or, you know how it is. But I... I decided way back then that I didn't want my brain to be fogged up anymore. That's why I don't drink alcohol and I don't even like to take a, an ibuprofen or an Advil or anything unless I'm in severe pain. And I know I'm only going to take it for one night. Um, I, I refuse to drink any kind of alcohol, anything with alcohol in it because I don't want my brain to be fogged up like it was. I mean, I lived in a literal disconnection from life for a long time. I remember in high school I got I did get off some of my medicine and I took I wanted to take biology because I was just I don't know why I guess I was interested in it in cells and you know I, I was just interested in neurology and all that and I wanted to take biology and the guidance counselor looked at my record and said you can't take biology you don't no, you're not smart enough. Well, <clears throat> I I did. I took it. I insisted, and I took it, and I got A's. I aced that class, and I loved it. And I also remember uh, taking these English classes. They let me take these advanced English classes for some reason. And I remember writing an essay, and. I won a national contest and they put my essay on display and I was so proud of what I was able to accomplish 
And I was kind of making the connection way back then. Although I was a minor, I still had to, you know, I had to go to the doctor repeatedly and get medicine still. But it wasn't as much. So my, in high school, my brain started, I guess, coming out of the fog because I was taking less medication. I didn't need it, I guess. And then I learned about neurology and um, how you need to nourish your brain and be healthy and eat food that's going to grow good, healthy cells and try to avoid uh, things that are bad for you. I, I, that was always my goal from the 70s, from the time I got married until now. That's why I don't drink alcohol. Um, and that's why, that's why I am how I am, I guess. I hope I don't get dementia because of all the medicine. So I'm working on, on my brain. So I think the hardest thing I ever take is coffee, but I love it. So I just wanted to tell you that story and let you know why this girl <laughs> and yeah, thanks so much for watching everyone and I hope you have a wonderful day we're going to go shopping today and maybe I think we're going to go hit the beaches and have breakfast on the beach and get some thrifting out of the way my husband's looking for a sink so we'll see have a good day everyone I'll see you in my next video.